In this lecture, we're going to discuss the electric potential, the voltage that is created as a result of an electric dipole. Now, let's begin by recalling what an electric dipole is. So, in a previous lecture, we said that an electric dipole is created anytime we have a separation of an electric charge that has an equal but opposite quantity. So, let's suppose we have the following particular example. Let's suppose we have a positive charge given by positive Q and a negative charge given by negative Q. So, the quantity of charge of these two point charges is the same, but the signs are opposite and they're separated by distance given by L. So, this is one example of an electric dipole. So, once again, an electric dipole is created by the combination of two e equal but opposite point charges that are separated by a certain distance. Now, anytime we have an electric dipole, we define the electric dipole moment of that particular electric dipole as the product of the charge and the distance between our two charges. Now, the electric dipole moment is denoted by a lowercase p, and notice it's a vector. So that means it has magnitude as well as direction. Now, in physics, the convention for our electric dipole moment vector is as follows. It begins on the negative charge and ends at the positive charge. In chemistry, this convention is reversed. In chemistry, the electric dipole moment vector begins on the positive charge and ends on the negative charge. So, let's suppose we have the following setup. Let's suppose we have two stationary point charges, point charge 1 given by positive Q and point charge 2 given by negative Q, and they're separated by distance given by L. So, let's choose some point. Let's suppose the point lies here, and let's call this point A. Now, the distance between point charge 1 and A is given by X and the distance between point charge 2 and A is slightly larger. Let's suppose it's X plus this value given by change in X. Now, if we draw a perpendicular bisector beginning at 1, which bisects this line, that will make a right triangle as shown. Now, this angle is given by angle theta. So, notice the distance L is the hypotenuse of this right triangle, and this distance change in X is the base of our right triangle. So, we essentially want to explore the following question. What is the electric potential, the voltage at point A as a result of the electric dipole produced by the following two separated point charges? So, the way that we're going to approach this problem is we know that voltage, we know that electric potential is a scalar. So that means we simply find the voltage at point A as a result of this charge. Then we find the voltage at point A as a result of this charge. And then we take the algebraic sum to calculate the total voltage at point A as a result of our electric dipole. So, First, we have to recall the equation, the formula that gives us the voltage as a result of a stationary point charge. So, this equation is given by the following formula. So, we derived this in the previous lecture or in a previous lecture. So, we said the voltage as a result of a stationary point charge Q is equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by R, where R is the distance between the point and our electric stationary point charge. Now, notice we can only use this equation as long as we define where our voltage is zero. So, let's suppose at an infinite distance far away from these two point charges, the voltage is assumed to be zero. So, now we can use this equation. So, uh, the total voltage at point A given by VA is equal to V1 plus V2, where V1 is the voltage as a result of charge 1, and V2 is the voltage as a result of charge 2. 
So this is equal to, well now we apply this equation. So for V1, we have positive Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by the distance between the point and our charge given by X. Plus, now our charge is negative Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by this distance, which is X plus change in X. So notice our Q's are the same quantity and we have 4 pi and epsilon naught on the bottom in the denominator. So that means we can take the constants out and we get the following result. So we distribute our negative and we get VA, the voltage at our point A or the electric potential at point A is equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by 1X divided by 1 divided by x plus change in x. So, now we want to combine these two ratios. So we want to find the common denominator, so we multiply both sides by x, and we get the following result. So multiply these two, and then multiply this by x plus change in x, and this by simply x. So this becomes x plus change in x, and this becomes negative x. Notice these x's will cancel, and the top will simply have change in x. And the bottom is x multiplied by x plus change in x. So this x will cancel, and we're left with the following equation. So this gives us the voltage at point A as a result of this electric dipole. So we have Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by change in X divided by X multiplied by X plus change in X. Now let's suppose this point is very far away. So what happens when this point is very far away? Well, when this point is far away, this X becomes much greater than the small distance change in X. So if our x is much greater than change in x, then that means we can approximate x to be equal to x plus change in x. So that basically means this denominator, this x plus change in x, is approximately equal to x when our x is much greater than change in x. For example, if x was 1 million and this was 0 0.1, then 1 million plus 0 0.1 is approximately equal to 1 million. That 0 0.1 makes no difference. So that means for this case, when x is much greater than change in x, for very far distances away, our voltage is approximately equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by change in x divided by, so this becomes x, x times x is x squared. Now, since, so if we look at the following triangle, so we have a right triangle here, the base is change in x, and the hypotenuse is L, and this is our angle theta. So we know by the cosine trig function, cosine of the angle theta is equal to change in x divided by L, where change, where change in x is the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse is the L of our right triangle. Remember, we took a line, we drew a perpendicular bisector, so this angle is 90 degrees. So we have a right triangle, that means we can use our trig function as shown. So we take this L and we bring it to this side and we see that change in X is equal to L multiplied by cosine of the angle theta. So now we can replace this change in X with simply L multiplied by cosine of the angle theta. And that's exactly what we do in this case. So our voltage at point A, our electric potential at point A, is equal to the following equation. Now, what exactly is Q multiplied by L? Well, by definition, Q multiplied by L is the electric dipole moment of this particular electric dipole. So that means we can replace Q multiplied by L with simply lowercase p. So we see that the voltage at point A as a result of an electric dipole is equal to the electric dipole moment, p multiplied by cosine of the angle 
meaning of theta divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by x squared. This is the voltage, the electric potential at point A as a result of our electric dipole only as long as we assume this distance x is much greater than this distance change in x.